Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live. Today is Friday, February 7th, 2020. We are again in the final hour of the trading day and the final day of the trading week. So I mention this each day, but I do the majority of my buying and selling, I make the majority of my buying and selling decisions at the end of the day, right near the close of the market. And the reason that I do this is during the daytime, you have the algorithms, you have the day traders, they're battling it out. I consider it noise. I don't consider it as valid prices as the end of the day prices, because at the end of the day, you have the large financial institutions come in with size and they take control of the pricing away from the intraday crowd and move it to what in my opinion, is the most valid price at the end of the day because they have the most technology, they have the most money, they have the best research, and they come in, make their decisions. And I want to make the majority of my buying and selling decisions uh, kind of on their coattails. That being said, I do occasionally, especially this week, I have made some intraday trades um, because there's been some good setups. And also, I thought it might be helpful to maybe have you see some of these trades play out in real time on a smaller time frame. So anyway, thank you all for coming today. I really do appreciate it. I always look forward to seeing everyone. I think we have a great group. Um, you know, everybody in this group adds some really good things, poems, good advice on the market, setup, so forth and so on. So I always look forward to seeing you. And uh, so thank you so much for coming today. And uh, I hope you're finding some value in this live stream. So uh, Kamal is here. Hey, hello, sir. How you doing? Nice to have you here. Appreciate it. And uh, uh, hey, just get back with me uh, so we finish up our lessons, right? So I think we still have a couple lessons left. So Kamal is a current student of mine. Very good. Uh, very good trader. Evan. Hello, Evan. Good to see you, my friend. Good afternoon to you as well. Gamer Squad is here. That's David out in uh, Denver. Nice seeing you. Hope you're having a nice day. Joe Turner is here. How you doing, Joe? Good to see you. Joe says, hi, everyone. Uh, Miko25 is here. Good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, Robert uh, Mar Marchand. How you doing? It's Bob here. Good to see you, Bob. Appreciate you coming. Jackson is here from Australia. Good morning, sir. Hope you had a good night's sleep. Probably sitting there with your computer uh, with a cup of coffee in your hand, I would imagine. Hopefully, right? So, all right. Well, we are having a uh, quite... Oh, there's Steve. Hey, buddy. Good to see you, Steve Burns. Steve says, hi, Greg. I have to say the third deviation channel has become a huge part of my trading this year. Oh, well, that's good to hear. And thank you, by the way, Steve, for coming by. It's always an honor to have you here. Oh, always a privilege. I'm always excited to have you in the chat to be able to rub shoulders with Steve. And I know everyone else is excited as well. And thank you so much for including me on your list today on Twitter. I do appreciate. But what Steve's talking about, third ATR channel, uh, which, um, you know, there's a couple different numbers people throw around. I, I guess I'm trying to be conservative but about 90% of uh, prices do stay above the negative third ATR channel and stay below the positive third, uh, positive third ATR channel. Here's the negative, here's the positive. Prices tend to run out of gas up here and they tend to bounce here. So I'm, I'm really glad, Steve, that you're using those and, and uh, hopefully, hopefully they've been helpful for you. I know they are for me. I mean, you know, every little edge you can get uh, is important. And, you know, you hear me talk a lot about confluence or combination of signals, very, very important. And, you know, the more signals, the more combinations you have, the better chance you have to extract some money out of this market. And a third Keltner channel is just another tool um, ideally in conjunction with other indicators. But I'm really glad to hear that, Steve. And thanks so much for coming by, my friend. Dan says, you sound like you are feeling better. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I, you know, I've kind of had this lingering fluey cold thing over the last week, it seems like. You know, you feel well enough to go and do stuff, but not like, you don't feel great, but you feel well enough to go out and do stuff, but you don't feel bad enough not to go out. So you're in that middle ground of, I guess I feel okay. 
<clears throat> but my voice is, it seems like I'm losing my voice. Hey, JT, good to see you, my friend. Appreciate you being here. Always nice to have you. Anthony, goody, what's going on, buddy? I haven't seen you for a while. Anthony's a former student of mine. So glad to have you here and glad to see Anthony. Hey, Greg and all, I've been here all along. Oh, you have? Okay. Poems and all. Somehow I'm a much better trader in February than I was in January. Well, good. We should, uh, we should ske schedule a Skype call, Anthony. I'd like to I'd like to hear about your trading and what's going on with it and keep up on it and see if I can help. Um, J Jackson says, every edge is sacred to the tune of Monty Python. Ah, I love Monty Python. Joe says, oh, we got a Joe from, we got a poem from Joe. Here we go. Hey, how about that? Huh? Not too bad. Greg's little poem. Uh, <laughs> the market today has a big chance. As you can see, it's, oh, wait, wait, wait. The market today made a big change. As you can see, it's out of its range. People used to people used to be slow to make the new additions, but now they do it thanks to zero commissions. <laughs> so true. I'm going to try that one more time and not hack it up this time. The market today has made a big change. As you can see, it's out of its range. People used to slow to make new additions, but now they do it thanks to zero commissions. Oh man, that's good. Thank you, Joe. If you don't mind, I'd like to share that. I've been sharing your poems on the uh, on Twitter every day, but I know you don't have a Twitter channel. Otherwise, I could reference you in there. So if you get one, you just please let me know. And uh, you know, I have... Whether it's true or not, I have noticed a huge, you know, the market's been crazy ever since we went to zero commissions. Have you noticed? I mean, I don't know if it's, you know, related or not, but how could it not be, right? People are in this, they're buying and selling, buying and selling. So thank you so much for that, Joe. Hey, Bing He, good to see you, buddy. Nice to have you here. Hope you're having a nice uh, morning in uh, Singapore. Joe says, thought I'd get one out before Frank. Yeah, you beat him to the punch this time. <laughs> Bing He says, may need to exit core later. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's down a little bit, but geez, you know, the market's getting beat here, isn't it? Uh, let's take a look at the markets real quick. So currently, we are down 270 points on the Dow. Uh, we are down 50 points on the NASDAQ, and we are down 16.49 points on the S&P. So we had some unemployment numbers come out and some other data, and it uh, looks like we have finally had an uptick in unemployment, which we haven't had for a while. So... Um, you know, I, I think the market's trying to digest that. And then in addition with all the coronavirus stuff and everything. So um, anyway, yeah, it's a pretty big day down today. Luckily, pretty light here on the position. So I'm definitely grateful for that. So um, ha ha ha, you'll have to write one about Australia. I was, we still have commissions technically. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, Jackson says, that is an interesting observation, Greg, because of the zero commissions over there. I'm sure it has an effect. I'm sure it has an effect. You know, back in the 70s when it cost $50 to get in and out of a trade, you would see longer, more sustained, even flowed uptrends. But as soon as they started having reduced commissions, you see choppier markets because the people would just hold in those uptrends because it was so expensive to get in and out. So it, it made it less volatile. Glenn says, hi, Greg, IWM SMH wheat today, signaling another pullback looks like in the cards. Yeah, hey, good point yesterday, Glenn, on bonds and oil uh, that kind of perked up and stabilized, indicating a possible move downward in the market. Really good observation, Glenn. Thank you. Frank says, oh, here we go. Hey, buddy, good to see you. Frank says, buying into earnings is like playing with a matchstick. <sighs> Buying into earnings is like playing with matchsticks a burning. If it's action you're yearning, this is one sure way of learning that a trade turn into a ga into a gambling will always leave you scrambling. <laughs> Buying into earnings is like playing with matchsticks a burning. If it's action you're yearning, this is one sure way of learning that a trade turn into gambling will always leave you scrambling. Bravo, Frank. 
Bravo. So true. Great, great, great poems from both of you and spot on and completely on point. Really great. So, okay, I feel myself running out of time already. Um, real quick, this is the plan for today. First of all, we're gonna run the US legal disclaimer. Uh, we're gonna come back, we're gonna take a look at my current positions. We're gonna talk about when I bought them, why I bought them, and how I'm gonna manage them moving forward. After that, we're gonna do a few minutes on tra trader psychology. I like to touch on this each day because managing your emotions, having discipline, is the most important skill that you can learn in trading. It's important to learn how to trade the technicals. I, I completely understand that, and you do need that. Uh, uh, to be able to look at support and resistance and build yourself a plan. But if you cannot follow your plan, it really doesn't matter how, how good of a chartist or a plan maker you are, right? So please, everybody, you know, this is why I discuss it all the time and beat you guys over the head with it, but it's so important. If you find yourself not being, not following your plan, you have to make some adjustments. You have to work on that skill. Spend some time, self-observation, deep meditation, isolation tank, I don't know, right? But whatever it takes, spend less time on your charting and more time on yourself if you find yourself not following your plan. So I like to touch on this each day and hopefully you guys will ingest it and internalize it. Uh, after that, we're gonna go through my watch list, each stock one by one. We're gonna look uh, for three different things. First thing, I look for a combination or a confluence of indicators, right? I look at indicators like MACD and RSI and moving averages and ATR channels. I look at these as groups of buyers and to really improve your chances of having a profitable trade, you can do that by being in the company as, as, as with as many other buyers as possible. And so if you have one indicator equals one group of buyers, theoretically, then two or three or four indicators lining up at the same place at the same time, theoretically, you have two, three or four groups of buyers. And the more buyers, the better, the better chance you have to profitable trade. So I look for combination, a confluence of indicators slash groups of buyers. Number two, want to make sure that I have a good risk to reward ratio, at least two to one. If I risking hundred dollars, I want to be able to at least make $200, if not more. And uh, requirement number three, um, I have to make sure I do not have too many correlated positions. I don't want to have too many companies in the same industry. Ideally, you want to have, you know, a variety of different type of industries and even better have some other things like gold or bonds or oil something like that, natural gas, right? That uh, diversifies you even more. So gonna go through, look for those three requirements. If I find something at the end of the day, I will go ahead, place the trade near the close. Uh, after the close, if you have any questions, please let me know, put it in the chat. If you would like me to take a look at any stock symbols, uh, I'm very, very happy to do that, give you my humble opinion. Uh, if you'd like me to look at a stock before the close of the day and you think it would be important for the group and it's time sensitive, please put an asterisk by it or a star or a peace sign or a fist bump. I don't care. Just something so I know it's time sensitive and I'll do my very best to get to it before the close of the market. Uh, all right. And that's that. So hang tight. I'm going to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. Take a breather here and uh, I'll be back in about 40 seconds. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. Okay. Hey, Zach is here. Good to see you, buddy. Joe Turner said, Australians had a fire which put them in a very risky position. They could donate money to the country if they had no commission. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> kind of snuck that one in the back there, Joe. Really good. 
There you go, Jackson. One specifically for you. That's great. Jackson says, just wondering, where did zero commissions hit the U.S. market last year? Does anyone remember? I feel like it was in the fall. Uh, okay, well, let's get to it. Uh, first uh, position of the day is the SPY. Uh, in case we have some new viewers, I do want to quickly go over this, let everybody know that I do buy the SPY every single day at the close. I sell it first thing in the morning. This is based upon a long-term backtest study from Lizanne Saunders at Bespoke Invest. This back-tested study is from 1993. Two options. First option they tested was buying the SPY at the open each day and selling it at the close each day. Every day since 1993. Buy the open, sell the close, buy the open, sell the close. If you would have used this approach, you'd actually return a negative 13.9% return for all your troubles. However, if you use the second approach, which is what I use, buy the SPY at the close each day, sell the next morning. So instead of buying at the open, selling the close, you buy the close, sell the next morning. If you'd have used this approach every day since 1993, you'd have returned 634.2% return. Past performance, no guarantee of future results. We do not know if this is going to work in the future, but it has worked fabulously in the past. And I would rather allocate money towards something that has a good track record compared to something that doesn't. I love this chart. It shows you if you have an edge over time, what your equity can curve can look like. Doesn't mean it goes straight up. There's ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs and ups. But, um, you know, the important takeaway there is that you position size correctly so that, you know, if you start here, you don't lose way too much money and get disgruntled with it, right? So I use a 10% position size. So that being said, uh, I did buy SPY yesterday right here at 339, sorry, 333.98 at the close. And I sold it this morning at the open for 332.81 for, uh, let's see, 332.92, just for just a little over a dollar per share. Um, We've had a great run the last four days. Look at this, buy the open, sell the close, buy the open, sell the close, buy the open, sell the close, buy the open, sell the close. Um, so I've been using this since February 26, 2018. It's been very profitable. The beginning of 2020 was a little rocky, uh, but uh, yesterday, a couple days ago, pulled me into the profit so far. So it was a great profit in 2019 and it's been profitable in 2020. So I'm gonna continue using this. Uh, did have a small loss tonight, today, uh, overnight, but I will be buying this again at the close of the day. Uh, UNG, all right, I did buy UNG back here on the 4th of this, uh, February. Uh, had a confluence of signals here, had a V2, here's day one, day two, day three, day two washes out day one, day three closes above day one. That's one signal. We had a false breakout to the downside. This bar went lower than here, back up. We went under 30, over 30, when went under the negative third ATR channel, over the third ATR channel. So had a nice confluence of signals. Next day it gapped down, but reversed back up. Next day it gapped down, reversed back up. I did hit one profit target there yesterday, and today I did hit another profit target today. Net net on this trade, I am down slightly. I bought it at 1468, it's at 1449, but I have taken partial profits up here. This is why I do like to phase out, um, because once it goes a certain amount of distance, uh, in the direction that I want it to, I phase out of a percentage of my share. So I can lock in uh, partial profits at profitable levels, but if it turns around and goes down, then I've already locked some of the profits up here and I've mitigated the loss if it goes down. So anyway, um, we do have here uh, uh, the fake out bar. A couple days ago, we had the high. We went up higher yesterday, closed below. That's what painted the bar. Today, we did go over that high, which is positive, but being back down underneath it, not so positive. But um, I am gonna stick with this trade. So uh, I, I still do like it. I like MACD's positive. I have taken a little profit off here, but it was nicely up earlier today, unfortunately, but gave some back. Um, okay, Though my those are my two regular trades. Um, I guess we've been in the habit here of having some day trades and so if it's okay with you guys if i do have a good day trade during the day a really good setup i will take it and uh show you so you can guys you guys and girls can kind of see 
um, in real time. But this is on a 39 minute chart. I like the 39 minute chart. I like the five minute chart, but 39 minutes, there's 390 minutes in a trading day. But you can see on the 39 minute chart, we're way up here, right? Way above the third ATR channel. Don't want to mess around with it in there. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for a pullback into value between this green line and this green line. And we did come back into value. I want to stress better not to buy up here, right? Wait for it to come back into the value zone, start to move sideways. Um, and then I took this V one here. Here's day one. Here is day two. Day two washed out day one, not a ton, but it did bounce near the 20 day or the 20 EMA. That's the reason I decided to take the trade. So we had a bit of a bounce at the 20. We also had a V1, not a ton of sideways movement, but it did slow down and kind of stabilize. So 39 minutes ago, I bought it here at 336.77. Um, it, is, it is positive now, it's at 337.26. I have three profit targets here. One, two, three. Don't know if we're gonna hit those. I am going to get out of this at the end of the day, regardless this little line up here, this is one ATR above my entry. So if it gets up to, if it moves larger than one ATR from my entry, then I'll in, then I'll start using some type of uh, trailing stop. So not a, not a lot of time left in the day here. I don't imagine we're even going to get it up into this range, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. But this is a return to value trade, had some sideways movement kind of bounce near the 20 with the v1 but so far we're up so I'm, I'm happy with that okay oh thanks joe yeah i felt like it was in the fall sometime like that hey john good to see you i think someone has asked about jo a few months ago perhaps time for another look oh sure i can't remember what jo was Oh, coffee? Boy, that's really gotten beat up, hasn't it? So down, 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 still under the 30 RSI, it crossed under the 30 over here. It's been under this 30 a long time, which is concerning. Anytime you can close under the 30 for a long time or close over the 70 for a long time, Things are really strong, either to the upside or the downside. I don't see anything I would be interested in here, John. Um, I would at the very least want to see this get over 30 and ideally back over the negative third ATR channel. John says, I'll say hi and have a nice weekend while I can type. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hope you have a good weekend as well, John. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, okay, so listen, uh, this is the time of the day where I do like to talk about trading psychology, the importance of it, maybe go over some good words of wisdom. There's some really good Twitter channels, some really good Facebook channels out there. Uh, and the owners of these channels are nice enough to post good, helpful sayings for us in regards to trading. And one of the best ones out there for sure is, and my good friend is Stephen Burns at Twitter, at S Joseph Burns, or just look up Steve Burns, but uh, at S Joseph Burns. But if you have not subscribed to Steve's channel on Twitter, you really, really should, because <laughs> he's the best, right? So Steve says, many traders believe that stop losses are the ultimate risk management tool. However, if you trade long enough, you will experience a 50% gap down or more, in which case a stop loss does nothing. Therefore, the only true risk management tool is position sizing. This is from at charting trends. So true. Luckily, I have never experienced a 50% gap down, but the point is, and I've heard people say this many times, right? Well, I have a, I have a $2 stop on it. So I position size to my $2 stop. And then I say, what, what, what about if it gaps down? Oh yeah, I don't know. So, you know, I've said this before, but the only two things you have control of in trading, the only two things, get this in your head, when you buy something or sell something and how many shares or contracts you buy or sell, that's the only control. Once you put that trade on, you are 
and not in control. The world has control of the market. You never know what's going to happen. You can say, okay, I'm going to lose $1,000 on this trade maximum, but what about if it gaps down five times that, right? You have no control. Yes, you have your stop in, but it's going to slice right through it if it gaps down. I, you know, here, here they say 50% gap down. Like I said, luckily I have not, but I, it's possible. And so the only protection you have against a 50% gap down, something like that, is a smaller position size. That's why I'm such a huge proponent and advocate for small position size for a variety of reasons. Just like here, right? You never really quite know. You could have a black swan moment. Something really bad could happen, right? And then you are screwed if you have a big position. Even if you have a mental stop or a stop in, in your system, but if it gaps overnight, doesn't matter. So, you know, please, you know, trust me when I tell you this, position size conservatively. You never know what's gonna happen. Please take the long view on trading. The only way you're gonna take the long view on trading is if you're staying in the game, the only way to stay in the game is to position size correctly. So if you do have a big monster gap down, it's not gonna hurt you that much. So again, therefore, the only true risk management tool is position sizing. So thank you so much, Steve, that was really good. Listen, I did see one other thing I wanted to point out to you quickly. Uh, this is from on Facebook, New Traders, Rich Traders. This is a really good um, uh, group in Facebook. Steve's in there, Tom Basso's in there, some really good people. And Tawny Stark, Tawny Stark has some great posts. I wish I could, um, I, wish, I wish they had a Twitter channel so I could kind of credit them with the post, but I wanted to show you something here. Supply zone, where emotional buyers meet technical sellers. Does that make sense? Demand zone, where emotional sellers meet technical buyers. Okay, I'm a technical seller, I'm a technical buyer. Where emotional buyers meet technical sellers. That's why you never see me buying up above the one, two, three ATR channel because up there are emotional buyers. If I, own, if I had the stock, I would be selling in that area because I'm a technical seller. And demand zone, where emotional sellers meet technical buyers right? Just like IBB had that nice uh, under 30, over 30 that Steve had. Those were emotional sellers down, uh, down at support. And Steve is a technical buyer. So, you know, when I talk about charts, when I talk about, you know, I don't want to buy over the third ATR channel and I look to buy under. So I'm looking to sell to emotional buyers up here and I'm looking to buy from emotional sellers down there. And I, I've mentioned this before, but you know, I've studied with Dr. Alexander Elder one-on-one -on -one, and he said, Greg, do you know what your role is as a trader? And I said, what? And he says, your role is to buy shares from emotional buyers, uh, emotional sellers, essentially. When they just want to get out, they're manic, depressive, they want to get out, your job is to buy it from them. And when things are going great, everyone's euphoric and they want to buy, sell it, right? So again, where emotional buyer, a supply zone is where emotional buyers meet technical sellers. People get emotional, they wanna buy up here. That's when I wanna be selling. People get emotional, they wanna just dump their stock down here. And that's where I wanna be buying. So anyway, I hope that helped. I saw that and then I was like, you know, that's, that's good stuff. That is really good stuff. How's our BA trade doing? Okay. So we bought it here, 336.77. So we're up. We're up dinner, at least, right? Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Oh, let's take a look real quick at some of your uh, positions here. So Evan had a nice trade back here on the 4th, moved up nicely, did reject the 200 day yesterday. That concerned me a little bit and it looks like we may be closing below the previous day's low. It's gonna be close. So Evan, let me know uh, what you're doing with this trade uh, so I can keep it on the board or take it off. And then Bing He, yeah, this one's not looking too hot, Bing He, but you, you let me know if there's any changes on this at the end of the day, but that's it. Uh, yesterday, a lot of you got out of your great positions. Um, Let's see, Evan got out of some, Bing He got out of some, Amansolo got out of some, 
And so uh, what a good day to get out yesterday, right? On some of those technical reversals and, and things like that. So uh, I think we're all kind of sitting in cash here. I mean, I'm not in cash. I, I have a little UNG right now and I have that day trade on Boeing, but that is all that I have. Boy, look at Apple, holy smokes. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll take a look there. Andrea, hey, good to see you. Andrea and I had a nice Skype call last night and uh, got to a little, know a little bit uh, more about each other. And um, I did get your message, Andrea, so I am really looking forward to working with you. So I'll send you an email and we'll work on, uh, you know, the time and date when we're going to get started on the lessons. But I'm excited to work with you, Andrea, I really am. Uh, hi, everyone. Yes, I've had my eyes on J.O. for a while now as well. Murat, what's going on, buddy? I was wondering where you've been. I hope you're doing well. It's really nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Jackson says, Greg, Steve, for these words of wisdom and experience, you are welcome. Um, Murat, Colbury is a Forex trader in UK and this supply and demand is very much applicable to Forex trading. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I would take it a step further and, and you know, say kind of it's applicable to almost all type of trading, but great to see you. Any trades, any good trades you've had lately or what's been going on? Evan, getting out of WBA, staying in SYY. Oh, why don't I have SYY up here? Evan, can you remind me when you bought SYY again? Sorry about that. All right, so we're gonna take WBA off the board. All right, Greg, get it together, please. Come on. All right. Okay, so you bought at the close yesterday. Nice. Nothing wrong with the little green there today, right? Murat says, I've shorted oil still in trade. Well, I don't know when you shorted it, but oil has definitely been, oh, sorry. I looked at UNH instead of USO. I was like, oh crap, <laughs> there we go. That's a, that's, a better, that's a better chart to short for sure. Okay. Hey, our BA is not doing too bad. Not too bad. All right, well, let's get to it. Go down through here, see if anything's cooking for today. Uh, Apple, boy. Um, my friend who sold the 50 calls on Apple, uh, good day for him today because they expire and they are gonna expire. Uh, completely worthless, but he sold calls. So that's what he wanted. So yeah, he made a, made a lot of money on that. He actually sold calls and sold puts on this, uh, sold calls above, sold puts below. So he, he brought them both in today. So fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, so uh, we've made a lower high now. I'm not real, see the lower high? That's not so great. But anyway, we'll, we'll see if it can settle down in here and do something, but definitely nothing on Apple today. Adobe waiting for a pullback into the value zone. Amazon, I think, is up today. Yeah, look at that, up 1.2%. That's pretty strong for Amazon. But again, just like the little graphic I showed you, emotional buyers, you know, emotional sellers. I don't want to buy up here. I want to be selling up here. Who knows? This could go racing off. You never know, right? Depends on your time frame. You might look at it a year later, and this would have been a good price. But for me, to get interested, I would need to pull back into value. Uh, Boeing, you know, I do want to point out one more thing on Boeing, why I took this trade. Um, you know, we had the huge bar up yesterday on a lot of volume, 50% mark 
kind of coincides here with the 50 day moving average. It, never, it didn't quite get there, but I did like the big move up on big volume. I like, you know, this pullback came on small volume. So I went into the smaller time zone and then looked for the entry. Hey, it's going good. Maybe we'll get one profit target here for the end of the day. Please remind me <laughs> to get out of this thing because I'm not used to having these day trades. So I'm definitely going to have to get out of this, but so far so good. So far so good. Uh, but as far as an actual day, uh, actual regular trade, I would need this to pull back into the value zone. Berkshire Hathaway uh, back down into the value zone. If we could get some sideways movement, that's what I'd be looking for. Beyond Meat, a uh, good example of pulling, of being above the value zone, in the value zone. We did have some sideways movement and it did, you know, right? Better than to buy up here, better to buy back into value and sell overvalued but I didn't have a trigger here on Beyond Meat. Caterpillar, uh, nothing there today. Um, this was a valid signal under over. I didn't take it here um, because we had stayed under the 30 day moving average, moved up, moved up, and now it's back down. I, see the, v, the big V formations? I don't like buying these big V formations because I, I mention this all the time, the people that buy here, once it starts going up and they were have fortunate enough to buy there, now it's moving up, now it's moving up. At the first sign of weakness, the people that bought here are gonna sell it and that is what's gonna move it back down. It would be fantastic if we could get this to go under the 38th yard channel, under the 200 and then back over, giving us a higher low and then a V1. Then if we move back up, it's easier because we don't have to worry about these people selling into us. These people bought here, sold here. So if it moves back up, there's less resistance and fewer sellers to compete with. So I would, you know, I've mentioned this. If you see something that hasn't happened yet in the future, mark it, right? Mark it and go, man, you know, if this get back, gets back down there in a few days or next week and has a V1, V2, that would be an excellent place to buy, but nothing on Caterpillar today. Uh, Dow Jones, <clears throat> pull back in it is back in the value zone but i need some sideways movement walt disney nothing really going on on walt there etsy larger than one atr bar coming into the value zone very likely it will go down and test this negative one atr in my experience not for sure right i mean we do have a v1 today but in day one's bar is small but we close above the 180R channel, not really much sideways movement. So nothing for me there. Facebook, nothing. Gold, looking for a five EMA to cross under the 20 EMA and then back over, or some sideways movement and look for a V1 or V2. Google, up today, interesting. Uh, need to pull back into value, like with a lot of things. Goldman Sachs. Okay, so look at this, guys and girls. Uh, looks like we have a cross under the five EMA crossing under the 20. Now, does that mean buy it? No, but if they cross under, then the not next crossover of the 520 EMA would be a legitimate signal. Um, I didn't take this last one, but look at this. The five EMA was under the 20 back over and look out, look at this beautiful trade that that crossover provided, <laughs> right? If you would have traded it mechanically, if you'd been trading it mechanically, you would have been getting out today if you traded 100% mechanically. So maybe Goldman Sachs something next week. Home Depot, need to pull back into value. IBB, uh, down a little bit. This is the trade I was talking about with Steve. Went under the 30, over the 30 RSI, under the third ATR channel, over the third ATR channel. So he bought this from emotional sellers and he sold it up here to emotional buyers. And listen, if, if you use these channels, like I'm not gonna buy over the one ATR channel or I'm not gonna buy over the two ATR channel, then you're, you won't be an emotional seller, a uh, buyer, right? Buy down here, sure, but not buy up, not generally buy up here. Buy down here from emotional sellers, sell up here to emotional buyers. <sighs> Intel, need to pull back into value. Russell 2000, uh, uh, we just talked about that a minute ago. 
great back tested approach. Look, the 10 SMA did close under the 50 SMA. It is. So going forward, once it crosses back over, I'll definitely buy it because it's a great risk to reward ratio. It has a good back tested approach. And I like where it's at. We're right here in the value zone. I don't like to take crossovers above the second ATR, but I love to take them right here in the value zone. So in the coming, you know, this, these are a little bit longer moving averages. So this may take a week or so unless we have a big move. But once that 10 crosses back over the 50, I will be in that trade. Johnson and Johnson moved up nicely, just waiting for a pullback into value. CarMax, nothing on CarMax at the moment. Coca-Cola waiting for a pullback into value. Lockheed Martin, double top with the bearish divergence. Here's our high, here's the, the length of our green bars. We pull back, we get some red bars. Now we're higher with no green bars. That is bearish doesn't mean go ahead and short that but just the big picture is bearish but you would need some kind of trigger to get into the trade uh, mastercard um okay so again just waiting for a pullback into value don't want to buy up at these levels mcdonald's well okay buying up here usually a mistake not always sometimes you get some big runs but better to wait for pullback were we above the 1 ATR channel we were are we back in the value zone we are have we moved sideways yet no we haven't so we need two more things we need it to move sideways we're in the zone that we want to buy it at but now we want it to move sideways and then look for some kind of trigger like v1 v2 um uh, Merck nothing really there you know I'd like it to go under the 200 over the 200 with the low RSI reading Microsoft is up today interesting need to pull back to value Netflix same pull back into value Nike we were under the negative one ATR channel we rallied into the value zone have we had two down days we certainly have so come Monday if we we could trigger a nice higher low v2 right here back in the value zone right about here if it if it goes up right I don't obviously don't know uh, what did I do ah. all right you get the idea Monday we can have a nice higher low v1 v2 there Philip Morris strong today like to see a little pullback people that bought here when it gets weak that it will make it come back down and look for a higher low v1 or v2 PayPal down today need it to come down deeper into the value zone Q's rejection of the third ATR channel rejection of the 70 RSI that's not particularly bullish but wait for pullback into value Silver looking for a five EMA crossing back over the 20. That's a good back tested approach. I did buy it on this one. Didn't work out for me that time, but a previous one worked out really well. But you know, if you back test it, long term back test, it does have a positive expect expectancy. So I would buy, be buying silver if we the five cross back over the 20. S and P had that uh, little overnight uh, loss. We'll be buying that at the end. Uh, at the end of the day for the overnight spy trade TLT uh, as Glenn mentioned did catch some support and bounce nicely there good call Glenn Tesla of course monster up monster down I'm just waiting for a pullback into the value zone and back here at some support where these previous resistance were Twitter had a big day up yesterday down today you know look if you're dying to get into Twitter you know better here above the 200 day moving average in the third ATR channel acting as support I, I I wouldn't buy here but you know if I had to get into Twitter I would much rather get in here where that 200 day and the third ATR channel are support below me than buy way 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 up here but me personally I'd like to see a pullback into the value zone um United Continental under the one ATR channel into the value zone couple days down you know, um, I'd like to see a V1 on Monday. Natural gas, of course, we had this one. I mean, it hasn't done much. It's been up 
force, down force, up force, down force. Did hit a profit target yesterday, did hit a profit target today. Still holding though here in, uh, in this setup. Uh, so I am going to be, I am going to still be holding this. I do like the MACD staying positive. United Healthcare Group came into the value zone a couple days down. So a V1 or a V2 on Monday would be fantastic. Oil is down today. Nothing there. VIX uh, up a lot higher earlier. Now is reversed. Verizon pegged the 200, bounced off. I'd like to see this pull back for a couple days. V1, V2. How are we doing on time? All right. Uh, Walmart. Nothing really on Walmart. Energy had that bounce. Uh, I didn't buy it because look how long we've been under the 30 RSI. So it doesn't, the longer you're under the 30 RSI, the more likely that first bounce is going to fail. Like it's exactly. But, you know, if I had a, if I had a really good V1 or V2 that rejected the negative third ATR channel, high or low, I would consider taking that. Uh, financials can't buy up here. Real estate, nothing. Utilities need to wait for a pullback into the value zone and healthcare. So I don't see anything here today, boy. But you know, that's how it goes. Sometimes you have trades, sometimes you don't have trades. Um, but I've just got to wait for some valid signals. So let's take a look at our current positions here. Da -da -da, UNG. And how's our little BA trading? Oh, uh, came back a little bit. So anyway, still positive, but I am going to have to get out of this at the end of the day, regardless of where it ends up. So that's that. Bing, he says, Evan, congrats on SYY. I didn't take the trade as I already had core, which is in the same food retailing industry. Let's take a look here. Yeah, nice trade. I mean, especially on a on a down day like that. Marit says shorted in multiple legs, went aggressive several times and burned my fingers. Oil is combustible. Trading oil is highly flammable. Burns fingers easily. Yeah. True. True. Be careful, Marit. Zach says, Greg, your five and twenty has an X next to the moving average name. Does that mean that anything different than the standard 100. Yeah, so the 200 is a simple moving average. See, you don't see an X, just moving average. The 100 is a simple right here. The 50 here is a simple. Anything that has an X next to it means exponential. So the 5 has an X, 5 exponential, 20 exponential. I have a 50 exponential as well as a 50 simple. Does that make sense? Mara says, in Forex, it is impossible to know about the volume since the market is not regulated. Usually there are large amounts of transactions occurred with the Wix form into supply and demand zones. Very important. Yes. Hey, Mount Doji. What's going on, my friend? Uh, good to see you. Uh, let's look at AMD. Well, te technically it's working on a V2, a higher low V2. We're down below the 1ATR channel, into the value zone. We have a down day, we have a down day, and we have a V2. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the worst in the world. It wouldn't be the worst in the world for a V2 right here. Um, but it would have to definitely close above... 4984 4984 that's two that's two days ago's close right so to be a valid v2 here's day one day two does nicely wash out and day three needs to close above day one's close so 4984 and right now it's at 4982 nice washout nice thick washout for sure So if you do anything with AMD, let me know, Mount Doji. All right, you exited core, Bing He. 
I don't blame you. Let's just get that one out of the way. Evan, thoughts on S SBUX? SBUX. I actually kind of like it. We have a higher low break under back over the 200 plus a V1 and it's a higher low. Let's take a look at the weekly. Weekly's in the value zone. It's in a good spot. Let's look at the monthly. Yeah, strong on the monthly. Weekly's back in the value zone. You know, I didn't think I really was really going to have a trade. Evan But this does look okay because it gives you a good risk to reward ratio mainly. We rejected the negative third ATR channel. We rallied, then we failed. But here another group of buyers came in and I like it because it's right at the 200 and the 200 lines up right with about halfway of this bar. Yeah, as long as that closes above the 200 and, and uh, 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 confirms that V1, I will buy this at the end of the day. Thank you. Because it offers a good risk to reward ratio. That's the, that's the main thing. Okay, I'm going to watch that one at the end. Hey, Marco, good to see you, my friend. Thank you for coming by. Hope you're having a nice evening in Slovenia. So, all right, well, let's check out. Oh, boo, boo. All right, well. Still in the money on this one, but a V1 to the downside. So we'll see what happens. Let's see. So we're at 264 points down on the Dow. Murat says Nokia trade is working very well. Bought on January 20, 20th and is up 13%. Really nice. Wow. I'd say so you bought over here. January 20th. Oh, okay. So you had a bit of a drawdown here, but now it's up. Very nice, Marit. Put a little Marit on there. Great day today. Okay. Oh, looks like it's going to be a scratch trade now. So what I'm going to do, everyone, it's literally break even. I'm just going to go ahead, sell this out. Okay. Well, that was fun. Did have some profit in it for a minute, but it rejected. So, you know, taking a scratch trade or a very, very, very small loss trade is a, a sign of a mature trader that you don't have to either make a ton or lose a ton on a trader on, on, on a trade. I don't like this V1 to the downside either. All right. I do, I do like, I do like Evan's Starbucks 
uh, chart here. Back into the value zone, which is good. Just watch that here at the end of the day. But that looks like about it. I don't see anything else other than the SPY trade and the UNG trade is still fine. It was an inside day today and going to buy the SPY here at the end of the end of the day. All right. And another thing, Starbucks is up today, so there's some relative strength, which is also nice. All right, so I'll try to wait pretty close to the end of the day there to see if that still holds. We, we know we may have a big thrust down here in the last couple minutes. You never know, especially with the weekend. Okay, I just noticed here January 7th. All right, that makes more sense, Murat. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right, so we'll be watching that trade then, Murat. That looks good. Very nice. You've had a ni nice couple days up here. Bing he says, Greg, is SPX RSI too high? Uh, look, it might reject the 50 day moving average. It might reject the 50 RSI for sure, but it hasn't rejected it after bouncing off the 20, off the 200 here. So, you know, if it rejects the 50, yeah, I, I will go ahead and get out. Uh, but it does offer, a, you know, even even if it rejected the 50 day moving average right here, the risk to reward still makes sense in my opinion. And I like the low, the rally, the couple day pullback and the higher low V1. A higher low V1 or V2 is always good. But in in a, what I really like about this is how it's rejected the 200 day. So do I know it's going to be a profitable trade? A hundred percent not. I have no idea, right? It's the slot machine. You put the dollar in, you pull the handle, whatever happens, happens. I don't know, but it does offer me a good risk to reward ratio. And that's all I have control over. Is there a setup? Is there a good risk to reward ratio? Even up, even if you go to here to the 50 day moving average, it looks like a good risk to reward ratio. Looks like it's going to hang. No, I'm going to have to buy this right here and right now a couple times. Okay. Ooh, SYY is rallying into the close. Good, good. What did Boeing do? Oh, about the same. Okay. So. 
take that out. SBUX. And where did we get filled on all Mr. SBUX? SBUX at 8646 and SPY at 332.20. Okay. So 86.46. Good. Spy at... Three, three thirty two twenty. All right, so that's what I have. I have the spy with the higher low V one that rejected the two hundred day and the one hundred day. I, I like it. I like I like the risk reward spy <clears throat> overnight spy trade. Sell that out Monday morning. And then UNG, great earlier today, hit the profit target back down, but still holding support. So not a lot of positions, not a lot of crazy positions, anything like that, which is fine. That's the way I like it, especially going into a weekend. SYY really moved up nicely here for uh, Evan at the end of the day. Fantastic. Did. Advanced micro devices trigger the V2. No, it did not. So we'll get rid of that. And so we have the only trades I, I have out here right now are for Evan and Murrett. Okay, so listen, if you have any other questions, please let me know just real quickly. Do my quick little daily plug. Let everybody know that I do offer private one-on-one -on -one coaching and teaching lessons in the evening time via Skype. I love to teach. I've had great results with my students. Uh, I do offer a course. It's a one-on-one -on -one course. It's over Skype in the, in the evening time. Uh, the course, there's five sessions to the course. Each session is between two and three hours. I teach you everything I've learned over the last 24 years as full-time trader, everything I've learned from all my mentors like Stephen Burns and Dr. Alexander Elder and Carrie Lavorne and Larry Williams, plus all the things that I've developed myself over the years. Um, Basically, the format of the classes are the first part of the class I teach, second part of the class I ask you questions, have you teach it back to me. We do lots and lots and lots of chart study. So um, if you're interested, um, please let me know. You can send me an email. Uh, it's in the description of this video. You can also uh, send me a message on Twitter. Um, what I like to do with the prospective student is have a free Skype call just to see if we're a good fit. Just like Andrea and I did last night, we had a nice chat for about an hour. We kind of talked about our trading and different things. Um, and uh, I think we're a good fit. And so we're going to go ahead with it. But if you'd like to schedule the free Skype call with me, please let me know. Um, um, I do have quite a few students here at the moment, so it, um, I, I probably would be a week or so out, maybe even a little bit longer before we could get started. But if you'd like to schedule that Skype call, it's free, and I promise you there's no obligation, but just send me an email or send me a message on Twitter and we'll get it set up. Um, and then if you like today's podcast, if you like this live stream, if you find it helpful, uh, please do me a favor. All I ask is that you hit the thumbs up button before you click on out of here. I would really appreciate it appreciate that it does help build the channel and uh, there's a lot of people out there that need help with trading and I think they could benefit if they would find this channel you know there's no hoopla here there's no pump and dump and you know all these crazy things I'm just trying to teach you good trading principles position sizing psychology all this kind of stuff and that's what most traders need so hit the thumbs up button and hey share it on social media maybe too right that would be that would be nice all right, enough of that. Don Robbins is here. Speaking of former students, what's going on, my friend? Good to see you. I used to date Don's sister. How about that? Do you remember Cooey, my little puppy doggy? That was Don's sister 
that uh, let me have her little puppy to raise it for a couple months before she headed off Hawaii. Good to see you, Don. What's up, Greg? I'm up on my last three trades. Fantastic. On your new screens that you showed me. That's pretty sweet. Murat, no, no, sorry. I bought on January 7th. Okay, I think I already noted that, didn't I? Sorry, when on my end, looking looking at these chats and stuff coming through, sometimes it's, it's hard to keep track. Yeah, January 7th, I got it there. Evan, taking off early to take my wife out. Have a great weekend and let's go SBUX. Did you take SB, SBUX also, Evan? Or did you leave me to have it by myself? <laughs> Have a great weekend. Have fun with your wife, for sure. All right. So what is the final tally here? Dow down 277. NASDAQ down 51.64. And S&P down 18.08. So red day to finish the week up. But anyway, not not a whole lot of trading for me in this last week not not really a ton all right oh you did take s sbux good i don't want to be in this by myself evan Evan's right there with me. Kamal took it as well. All right. Thanks, Donnie. Thanks, David. Thanks, Gamer. Appreciate it. All right, so Greg Kamal and Evan are in Starbucks. And again, you know, what's the setup? You know, let's kind of go through this. We have a deep move down here. People that were fortunate enough to buy here, they're happy it's going to go up, but they're not in this for the long term. They're in this for the bounce. If it starts to get a little shaky, they're going to get out. That's going to cause selling pressure. That happened here. That happened here. New group of buyers came in today the people that bought here sold here so that if it keeps moving up i don't have to worry about these people selling into me they did it during here we also had a v1 here's day one day two day two washes out day one closes above day one's close closed above the 100 closed above the 200 doesn't mean it's going to go up no it doesn't but there's legitimate support here a confluence of basically of halfway of this bar for the v1 the 200s right there above it so uh, I've, I have legitimate support and a legitimate trigger um, so we'll see what happens right doesn't mean it's gonna go up but if I'm wrong hopefully I'm wrong small oh Jackson is also in this looks like a group trade at this point no pressure whatsoever evan for showing this to us none don't feel it <laughs> okay dan says i should have taken starbucks but i did my first spy trade today oh you did thank you greg good night everyone here welcome dan so you took the overnight spy trade. Well, I took it as well. So we will check out and see how we do on Monday. I hope you position size correctly, Dan. And um, glad to have you in the overnight spy group. You have a good night as well.
Let's see what happened in after hours here. Apple down a little bit after hours. Starbucks is even. Spy is down a little bit. UNG is even, so nothing really there. Bing he says, Greg, I think 50 RSI for Starbucks is about one and a half percent above closing price. If so, it will be about one to two risk to reward. So let's see where the let's see where the risk let's see where the 50 RSI is. For Monday. Right about there. And so what you have, you have a confluence. Well, here's the 50 day moving average and then the 50 RSI is a little bit above it. So if it rejected the 50 day moving average but didn't touch the 50 RSI, I would still get out of it, right? I would still get out of it. But if it closed above the 50 day moving average but didn't reject the 50 RSI, I would keep it. But if it moved up strong and moved up above the 50 RSI and the 50 day, I would keep it. But yeah, so, you know, let's go with the closer one. The closer one is essentially the 50 day moving average, which is 1.61% up. And our stop at the best would be 0.52. So, you know, theoretical best case scenario about 0.52 with a writ of a gain of 1.57 so close to three to one close to three to one the way that i'm doing it being he you may have plotted the 50 rsi maybe a little closer but the 50 rsi for monday is actually right here at 8804 so we're at 86.42, right? 86.42, 88.04, 86 86.46 is our entry in there. Our stop is 86.04. So we're basically risking at the best 40 cents to the downside and making like, you know, a dollar 40, something like that to the upside. Does that make sense, Ming He? Holy smokes, everybody. Look at when. Remember, we bought that here. Traded it up to here when it rejected the 50. So this is a this is a good example being he of rejecting the 50. It actually rejected the 50 RSI and the 50 day. I did get out of here. I you know we bought it here, got it out here went down the next day went up and then got clobbered again today but you know i would be looking for when possibly here another bounce on the 200 day moving average bummer on ung that was a bummer because that was up nicely but like i said that's one of the reasons i like to phase out you know because if it does have a nice thrust up during the day at least i don't have to give it all back and i can lock some of those profits in So Robert says, how do you plot the RSI? So on my trade uh, platform here or on my charting platform here, Robert. Um, oh, one second. Sorry. Be right back to finish that thought. Katie, my dog, was interested in hearing about how you plot the, if, the, the RSI, so she wanted it in as well. So uh, here on Trade Navigator, my charting platform, I have this little tool here called the What If Tool. And I can 
plot the next the current day or the next day to see where the RSI is going to be at a certain price. So look down here, see where it says 3189. So Monday I go to see where is the price going to be at a 50 RSI. And it's going to be on Monday. Oh boy, here we go. Way up here. right about there compared to you see how today it was up here but now it's going to be lower so i can i just use this tool so i'll be able to tell on monday i know the 50 rsi is going to be here so that helps me with my phasing out and the math formula that i use to phase out but unfortunately i've never seen another trading platform other than trade navigator right here that has this what if what if tool and that's honestly the main reason i use trade navigator one i've used it for 20 years and two i love that tool but uh, i'm not sure how else you would plot it i'm sure some smart people with coding and so forth could do it but i just luckily have the access to that what if tool robert oh on starbucks okay so like jackson I'm not sure how Jackson does it, Robert, but because he doesn't have Trade Navigator, but he's a super smart guy with computers and, and coding and stuff. So let's let's compare notes here and see where the 50 would be. So I have the 50 on Monday at roughly there. Maybe it just did touch higher right there oh my shoulder i have an 8804 jackson has it at 8804 wow way to go jackson <laughs> being he i need an absolute three percent profit target for me to take a trade i think i will give s starbucks a miss okay makes sense makes sense All right. So if anybody has any other questions for me, please just let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to get out of here, go for a little walk. Um, up in the mountains, maybe go to the gym, although I kind of hurt my shoulder, so I'm not sure about that. Murat says, just close my oil short. I didn't want to carry a short position over the weekend. There is a very good setup. Send you my chart. Yeah, I just saw that. I'll look at that and reply a little bit later. Thank you, Murat. I always like looking at Murat's uh, 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 setups. Dan says, I did, I did position small. I was a buy and hold index investor for 20 years. Did okay overall, but did sit through some big drawdowns, then recovered but not fun ride, all cash as I study. You know, Dan, let me show you something. Let me show you something specifically for Dan, for being a um, long-term index investor. This is one of my favorite back-tested studies here. Let me, ah, oh, geez. Okay, good. Let me set this up here. Boom, boom, boom. So this is from ETFreplay.com, and they allow me to use this. But one of my favorite approaches is if you are a long-term index buyer and holder, a, a, an alternative to this would be, and this is a great trading approach because you only have to look at the market literally one time a month right not asking two months just one time a month and you enter this position at the end of the month the last day of the month if 
the price of the S&P 500 is over the 200 day. But it had to be underneath it the previous month, right? So it has to be underneath it the previous month. And then you look at the, you, you, you look the last day of the month and see if it closes above. If it closes above, you buy it. You don't look at your computer or the market till the next month, the last day. If on that last day, it's still above the 200, then you keep it. Then you look at the next month. If it's still above, you keep it. If it closed below on the last day of the month, then you get out, you revisit it again the next month. If it's still under, you still stay out. You look at it the next month. If it's over, you get back and so forth. So the maximum number of trades you could have is 12 trades per year. So let's look at the back test. 200 day moving average based upon the simple moving average looking at at the month end. And this is gonna be compared, Dan, to buy and hold, right? So there's two approaches here. Oh, I had the wrong index. Oh, my shoulder. This is based on the SPY, not, not the Dow. All right, here we go. If you would have used this approach, remember, you only have to look at this thing once a freaking month, right? Using this approach, 439.9% return. During the same time period, buy and hold, only 253.5%. But the big difference, look at the drawdown. Buying and holding during that time, you would have had a 55% drawdown, meaning you would have lost half, over half of your money from the high. This approach only had a 20% drawdown. So it beat buy and hold by a good third, and the drawdown was only 20% compared to 50. And it's super easy. People say, I don't have time to trade. I don't wear suspenders and a tie. That's all you have to do, right? Look at, this, look, at the, look at the market at the end of the month and see, oh, it's still above 200? Okay, I'll keep it. I'll check in next month. Check in next month. If it's still over 200, keep it, so forth and so on. If it then closes below, then get out. Look at the last trade. The last trade entered on June 28th, 2019, because on the last day of the month, it had closed above the 200 day and it's still in the trade now, February 6, 2020, with a 15.08% return. Look, look, look at the trades. Had a 5% gain, then you had a 5% loss. Then you had a 73% gain, a 20% gain, an 8%, 69. Oh, then you had a little 1.36 loss, then you had a nice 38.21, then an 8% loss, then a tiny little loss, and a big gain. Do you, do you see any um, common denominator here? The common denominator is when you're wrong, you get out quick for a small loss. When you're right, you stay in for monsters. Isn't that something, Dan? Where it says, I was hoping to hit $50 today to reach middle target, but it turned back from 50.20. My ultimate target is 48.20 in the uh, WTI. We might see a very active market next week. Chart has a lot of footprints. Yeah, and you're short. Well, Murrah is a great oil trader and I always like to look at his charts and look at his setups. And I'm going to look at your setup later and then maybe Monday, Murrah, I'll share it. Uh, Dan says, wow, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. All right, everybody. Listen, thank you for coming by. Always nice to see everyone. Um, please go out and have a nice weekend. Be safe. Enjoy life a little bit. Uh, but as always, two things before I let you go. One, please go out. Try to do something nice for somebody today. Just a while, a smile or a wave or a hold the door open. Give them a bite of your donut. I don't know, something, right? Just something to show that there's a little humanity left in this world and it may make a big difference in their day and it's going to be good for you too. And then if you don't mind on your way out here, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that would really be nice as well. So um, Jackson says, Greg, thank you again. Do appreciate everything you're doing here. Take it easy on those bench presses with that shoulder. Uh, uh, all have a great and safe weekend. You too, Jackson. Nice. Really great to have you back in the group, my friend. Um, it's always fun to have Jackson back in here. Uh, Mekon25, thanks, Greg. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you so much. Bing He says, thanks. Thank you.
Binky, have a nice day there in Singapore. Marco, have a nice evening, my friend. Good to see you, Marek. Take care, Greg. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, Marit. So, all right. Well, that's a wrap for the week. Hopefully, I have my voice back a little bit next week. And uh, should be interesting, you know, having that unemployment tick up a little bit. Uh, I know the market doesn't like that. So, you know, that along with the coronavirus and so forth. So, let's all be safe out there. Make sure we uh, position sides correctly and uh, be aware of risk, right? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week on Monday during the last hour of the market. Bye-bye. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. U.S. Government Required Disclaimer Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind, which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.